Here's something that's really going to surprise you. Whoop, that surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you'd never seen a bubble before and you just saw me do that for the first time. That would be pretty spectacular. Think about what a bubble is. What exactly is going on there? And you see one of these bubbles floating around. Well, if I think about a bubble as a system, we could think of it as air on the inside, air on the outside too, and a thin spherical membrane of soapy water, right? And I mean very thin. They gradually descend because they are more dense than the surrounding air. That's because of the weight of the soapy water. If we were to then postulate from that, there's a good word, the existence of an anti-bubble, what would that be? Well, it would only make sense that that would be soapy water on the inside, soapy water on the outside, and a thin spherical membrane of air. Hmm? Well, it turns out anti-bubbles, you've probably even seen them and not realize it. They're not too difficult to blow, but I can't do it in here because I have to do it in an environment of soapy water. So, this beaker is just filled with regular water, but I'm going to show you how to make anti-bubbles. We're going to start with a little bit of uh, Dawn. These are both filled with Dawn, but it doesn't really matter which kind. Um, and the thing is, you want to use a very little amount. This would not be good, that tiny amount I put in there, for blowing regular bubbles. But this is ideal for blowing anti-bubbles. I'm not quite sure why. You also need to have a nice, clean surface. You can't have any suds there where you're blowing them. So, I'm using a pipette, and if I, whoop, there was a regular bubble. If I draw up some of this soapy water, and then just let a drop of it fall on the surface, you'll see just for a moment a little bead of water hanging out there. Is that showing up? I'll do one over here by the edge, maybe. Okay? I think you've probably seen that before. Okay? If you push it out a little bit more, though, you can actually push that bead down. And it's not really in contact with the water below it. There's an air membrane beneath it. So watch this. There's one right there. That is an anti-bubble. And I'm going to keep it down there by blowing little jets of soapy water onto it. And then I'll finally just let it rise to the surface where it comes to rest and then pop it. A regular bubble sinks, we said, because it's more dense, the soapy water weighing it down. But if I wanted to keep a regular bubble up, I could blow little jets of air up at it. Again, in this anti-bubble system, I was keeping that, that the anti-bubble wants to float because of the air membrane causing it to rise. So to keep it down, I was blowing soapy water down onto it. So I'll blow a few more of them there. Oh, there's one, there's another, there's another. I got a whole family of anti-bubbles in there now. Can I juggle them? I could try to juggle them, let's see. Have a little anti-carnival going down in there, okay. They really are wonderful, and when a regular bubble pops, if you're looking carefully at it, if it pops in midair, you will notice it disappears, and very carefully then, a bunch of little droplets of water fall down in its place. Watch what happens when an anti-bubble pops underwater. I'll try to make a nice large one there. Ready? I'm going to pop it. I don't know if you saw that. If you get a close-up, it should show up pretty well. If I pop one, right away you see little tiny droplets of air. We call those bubbles, regular bubbles, flow quickly up to the surface. And those little bubbles represent all the air that was in that air membrane. So that tells you how thin that thing must have been if a maybe 10 millimeter diameter antibubble pops and all that's left is a little one millimeter bubble of air. 
There seems to be a limit as to how big you can blow these things. I've never blown one that's more than, let's say, no, that's about as big as they get right there. Again, watch what happens when I pop it. There it is. It's those little, little tiny air droplets. What if I wanted to, well, let me say this. What if I blew a regular bubble not with um, air but with something like helium? That bubble would float, right? Well, let's see if we can get an anti-bubble to sink. I'm going to add a little bit of corn syrup. Whoop. Since this is a nice, unopened container of corn syrup, I'm going to spend a second here just opening it. Or not. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to add some corn syrup to my mixture here. That's kind of neat in itself, isn't it? It's so dense, it just goes right to the bottom. And now what I'm doing is I'm swirling it a bit. What I'm trying to do is create what's called a density gradient, where it doesn't go corn syrup and then boom, soapy water, but gradually transitions from a dense corn syrupy layer gradually into a just soapy water layer. Okay? So we'll see how we've done here. I'm going to draw my soapy water from way down here near the bottom, not on the bottom though, and use it to blow antibubbles up here at the top. And when I do, notice how they stay suspended there. Because they are filled with a denser solution then what was at the top, they sank down, and they essentially have sought out their own density. Why are they not all at the same spot? Because they're different sizes. And because they're different sizes, they have different volume to surface area ratios. Ooh, that's a good one. It looks like I have a little solar system going there. Let me draw it even more off the bottom and see if I can get some suspended even lower down. There we go. And in case I have some people really doubting whether those are, in fact, filled with soapy water, I can do this as well. I'm going to draw some of them here. I might have stirred it a bit too much because those are rising. Let me add a little bit more corn syrup to it. And that's working pretty well, but I've actually had them suspended in, in a beaker for over half an hour. And you have to wonder what would cause them to stop existing? What would cause them to all of a sudden pop out of, the, out of the blue? And that really is, I believe, that that thin air membrane is getting thinner and thinner because the air is probably dissolving in the surrounding water. And that's kind of makes you think about why a bubble pops. We say because it dries out, but maybe evaporation is a kind of a dissolving as this soapy water evaporates off into the air, just like the air dissolves into the surrounding water. So let me try this again here. I'm going to draw some from near the bottom. And I'm going to add a little food coloring to it. See if we can't make some colored antibubbles. So, probably made that a little darker than I needed to, but what the heck. There we go. Ooh, when they pop, it's kind of cool, isn't it there? Are we seeing some of those? They're sitting a lot of them are near the, are right near the bottom. I made this really dense. So, if you walked into the room and just saw those sitting in the beaker, what would you, what would you assume they were? Antibubbles? <laughs> You know, there were, there's some right there near the bottom. So, a nice little lesson in science. There's surface tension. There's, of course, intermolecular forces going on there. But there's also just this whole mystery of what exactly holds together an air membrane. I think it has more to do with electrostatic forces than anything else. And they actually are at play in, in bubbles as well. So there's a fun activity to do with your students. Thank you.